So in this video, we will be discussing the asymptote and the general concept around it. So an asymptote is any line that a function approaches when it goes to infinity. And normally the function will never cross this asymptote and the distance between it and the asymptote will tend to become close to zero as the function approaches infinity. So there are three types of, asymptote, uh, there are three types of asymptotes. There's the horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote, and the oblique asymptote. As you can see, the horizontal asymptote is the horizontal dashed line, and this function f of x approaches it, but it never actually touches it or crosses that asymptote, meaning that this distance between this asymptote and the function will come really, really close to zero as this function extends on to infinity and this asymptote extends on to infinity, but this function will never cross that mark. So the second one is is the same, it's a vertical asymptote, and it's a vertical line. And same concept here, the function goes up, never actually crosses that vertical asymptote. If it goes on to infinity, the distance between here and here will become really close to zero, but it will never actually equal zero. The last one is the oblique asymptote, and it's the exact same kind of concept, except the line, it's not, the line is like a combination of the vertical and horizontal, it's like the it's like a, like a normal function y equals x, and in this case it's the same kind of concept, the function approaches it, and when it goes to infinity, distance, this distance between the function and the asymptote will become really, really, really close to zero, but it will never actually equal zero. So the one thing to remember with the asymptotes is that the function, as it, it will never actually cross it, it will just become really, really close to it, and that's the key idea around the asymptote. So normally, um, we can determine the different types of asymptotes that a function has based off of its equation. And the easiest one to figure out is the vertical asymptote. The one trick that I use to find the vertical asymptote of any function is to look, to pay attention to the denominator of that function. For example, for example, if you have the function f of x equals x minus 2 over x plus 2, to find the vertical asymptote of this thing, I will look at the denominator. Just focus on the denominator. So given that, once you do that, once you identify the denominator, all you need to do is you need to set this equal to zero. So x plus two equal to zero and solve for the x, x equals negative two. And as simple as that, we know that this function has a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two. If we draw that on an axis, we get the asymptote, we, we denote that with the dashed line, is that x equals negative two. It's as simple as that. All we do is we take the denominator of the function and set it equal to zero, and that will be your vertical asymptote. Whatever you get will be your vertical asymptote. Like even if you had, like for example, if you had f of x equals x over x squared minus one, right? All we need to do is set the denominator to find the vertical asymptote of this function. All we need to do is to set this denominator equal to zero. So x squared minus one equals zero. We know by factoring, we get x minus 1, x plus 1 equals 0. And now, x, when does, when does x equal 0? x equals 0 and x equals 1, and x equals negative 1. So basically, this function has two vertical asymptotes. So, if we draw the axes, we have 1 at negative 1, and we have 1 and 1. As simple as that, take the denominator and set it equal to 0 and solve for this x equals equation. So like the vertical asymptote, the horizontal asymptote is pretty easy to calculate. And to do that, all we need to do is compare the coefficient of the variable with the highest power in the numerator to the coefficient to the variable of the highest power in the denominator. So the first step I would do is to identify the highest powers in both the numerator and the denominator. And in the following example, f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 1 over 3x squared plus 3x plus 2. The two highest powered variables in the numerator and the denominator are x squared over 3x squared plus 1. Now, all I have to do is to compare the ratio of the coefficients. In this case, the x squared has a 1 and the 3x squared is 3. So we can say that the horizontal asymptote 
of this function is 1 over 3. Yes, that's simple. All we did was we compared the coefficients of the two variables with the highest powers of the numerator and the denominator. In this case, x squared is 1, 3x squared is 3. So the horizontal asymptote is y equals 1 third for that function. If we do another one, for example, f of x equals x to the 7th plus 3x over 2x to the 7th plus 4x, the horizontal asymptote for this would be first to identify the two highest powers and then we look at the coefficients and put them into our ratio. Remember, this is a 1. So the asymptote for this would be 1 half, right? Because 1 over 2 is 1 half. But notice that we can only use this trick if the highest power variable in the numerator, the highest power variable in the denominator is equal to each other, meaning it's x squared and x squared, x to the 7th and x to the 7th. If it was like x to the 9th over x to the 7th, we can't use a horizontal asymptote, and that would actually be an oblique asymptote. So that means if we have a horizontal asymptote, we can't have an oblique asymptote. And if we have an oblique asymptote, we cannot have a horizontal asymptote. So the only way you can use this trick of comparing the coefficients is if the, this power, the highest power in the denominator, equals the highest power in the numerator. But also, there's another trick. Let's say we have the following function. f of x equals x cubed plus 1 over x to the 4th, right? Immediately, we notice that the powers are not the same. The highest power in the numerator is not the highest power in the denominator. And we're thinking, oh, we can't use the horizontal trick, horizontal last or trick, because they're not the same. But notice that this, the, co the exponent in the denominator is, is higher than the exponent in the numerator. And in the long run, when you plug in the big numbers, this denominator is going to get so large, it's going to outnumber this numerator. And when we have a really large, for example, if we have a really large number over a small numerator, let's say we have like 1 million, right? This is practically zero, about zero. It's the same thing in this case. In the long run, since the, the exponent of the denominator is larger than the exponent of the numerator, this thing is going to eventually go to zero because the denominator is going to be so much larger than the numerator, it will be equal to zero, the, sorry, the, the y asymptote, the horizontal asymptote, will be equal to zero. So notice how, if the, co if the exponents are equal, you can use the horizontal asymptote trick I showed you, where you just compare the coefficients, or if the denominator is greater, the power of the denominator is greater than the power of the numerator, all you need to do is set y equals to zero for the horizontal asymptote, because the denominator is going to outnumber the numerator in the long run. So the oblique asymptote is a little bit more complicated than the horizontal or vertical asymptote. And in the previous demonstration, I showed you that the main difference between the oblique asymptote and the horizontal asymptote is that you use the oblique asymptote if the powers between the numerator and the denominator are unequal. More specifically, if the power in the, the highest variable power in the numerator is greater than the highest variable power in the denominator, in this case, in the following example, y equals x squared minus x minus 2 over x minus 2. Notice how these two are the highest variable powers in their respective place. But the, x, but the x squared in the numerator is greater than the x in the denominator. So we can't use the horizontal asymptote rule. And we have to do the oblique asymptote calculation. So to find the oblique asymptote calculation, all we need to do is we need to divide this denominator into this numerator. So you can either use long division or you can use synthetic division. And I will use long division. So I'm going to write the numerator inside division symbol and the denominator, I mean the numerator inside here and the denominator out here. How many x's go into x squared? We have x. So we have x squared minus 2x. Now we're multiplying this by this and this. Then we subtract x squared minus x squared is 0 minus x minus minus 2x is x. Don't forget to bring down the negative 2 since this is a 0. How many x minus 2s are in x, x minus 2? Only 1. So when we do this calculation, we see this is equal to x plus 1, or that the horizontal asymptote is equal to x plus 1. So remember, we use obliques, we use the oblique asymptote calculation when the highest power variable in the numerator is greater than the highest power variable in the denominator. This example shows you that the x squared is greater than the x. 
So we have to use the oblique asymptote, and all we did was we took this denominator and we divide it into the numerator using e, I use long division, but you can use synthetic division, whatever you want. And you get x plus 1. Thank you guys for watching, and please comment and subscribe below. Thank you.